Hi, I'm Billy. And today we are going to discuss the cycle of requests and responses in Rails applications. This is a kind of important topic to understand the full picture of how web applications work in general. Besides, it will be helpful in your future work in case you need to catch and fix some bugs, for example, related to the performance. So, let's take a look on our browser. Once we enter URL, browser shows the content, images, text, link and so on. Every browser has development tools that give additional information. In fact, this is a very powerful tool that can be helpful in many cases for back-end and front-end developers. On this page, we see a few tabs. Currently, we are interested in the tab network, which shows all requests that browser sends to the network for this site. An entry point and the trigger for all requests is the first request with the same name as the current URL. If we click on it, we'll see additional information. Requests URL. Status code. The code between 200 and 399 means the request was successful. And we see response headers. They have important information regarding such things as cache strategy, encoding mode and so on. Also we see the content type, which our web server returns to us for our request. It's text, HTML, as we can see. And on the tab response we see the response body itself, which will be rendered by the browser on a web page. But how does it work under the hood? Let's take a look at the details. Before sending a request to the web server, the browser should find an actual IP address. For these purposes, there are DNS servers in the network that can map URL strings into a machine address. After that, browser is able to send a request to a certain web server. So, let's see what a web server is and how it handles requests. On this slide, we see that inside the web server there is an application server. This is actually our Ruby framework with which we will deal most of the time. In the picture we see middleware. These are several layers through which the request sequentially passes, like through such a sieve. Commonly, we don't work a lot with this part of the application. So for now, just know that it exists. The request then goes to the roots.rb file, where the Rails application determines which controller to use to process the request. In the controller we make most actions to process the request. Besides, here Rails app generates the response, which will be returned through the reverse chain of middleware to the browser. This is one request response cycle in web applications. Let's now see what it looks like from a developer's point of view. Imagine our Rails application needs to process a request site.com slash reports. Here we can see three types of files, which we will deal with on a daily basis in our work. First of all, based on the URL, the application determines the specific controller that will process the request. After that, the controller performs actions with the input parameters. Commonly, there we have database requests. For Rails applications we usually use Active Record, which helps us to generate SQL requests to the DB. After all statements are finished, the controller generates the response. In case of HTML response we can use templates for that. It's possible to pass some parameters to the template, so that to get dynamic content, based on our previous statements, such as data from database. Now, all our work is done and Rails application can send the response back to our browser, through middleware, web server, and network. That's basically all. Not so hard, isn't it? But if you want more, just Google it. Top ranking sites have everything you need to understand this topic. And if you want even more detailed information, please check out these links. Thank you for your attention, and see you later.